Welcome to Dose of Substance, the podcast for mature minds, self-aware, and bold spirits. Some of the comments may be too hot to handle, so if you can't take it all in at once, take it, take, take, take it in doses. Or not bad to listen to nothing. Sponsored by Mind Steeds Collections and the Substance Music Group. Greetings, everyone. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome, welcome. If you're here for the first time, welcome to Dose of Substance Podcast. If this is not your first time, welcome back to Dose of Substance Podcast. I'm your host, um, Raynard, the Substance Brian, and I have with me my sister, a friend, you know, um, the beautiful Kadian Allen. You know, oh. um, yeah, man. What, what a conversation we're about to have. What a great energy exchange we're about to have, and we trust that after this episode, you know, a lot of persons will feel lifted, you know, and, and, and feel a sense of alive, you know, running through their, their veins and their minds and hearts and souls. You know, um, before we get into it, I want to shout out my sponsors, Jazzy Jules, um, Club Fashion, Sophisticated Dreams, uh, Agents of Change, BizCare Consulting Group, Surepass Institute, and of course, Minds Tease Collections, and substance music group yes i so give thanks um katie let me first say thank you thank you thank you so much for this opportunity and i don't know i might i might i might have to calm myself down a few times you know because this is something where i was hoping that would have happened um one day in the future um i never expected it to be today i never expected it to be on this program but i knew it's something that i wanted to happen you understand me so it's like i wanted to hear from you feel from you as well as you know do the same you know uh, so this topic right here um is dealing with the loss of a child and it's not just the loss of a child the loss of your child you know wow. yeah. okay so the feelings have already started didn't expect yes. that to happen so soon but right. yes um if you follow me on instagram already or if you know people that i've known um, yes, I did lose my son back in September 1st, 2017. Um, it's been a journey. It's been a lot of emotions. Thankfully, a lot of growth. Um, and I've encountered quite a handful of people that have either experienced something similar or, you know, still birth, different types of child loss. And the only question they have for me is how. How do I cope? How do you cope? How, what advice, how? So I've had those case by case conversations, which has personally helped my growth. And um, I've done other things, conventional, yeah. unconventional things to help me grow. So here we are. And I'm happy you said that. Cause um, the thing is I've had, I've had those experiences where, you know, me opening up my experiences to other people sharing my pain sharing whatever i went through still going through and will have to go through for the rest of my life um i've had to share those experiences with people but i've never had to share it on the level that i'm about to if that makes sense and everyone that asks you certain questions um it evokes a different emotion mm -hmm. right Especially when, you know, some people just want, just, they just want some information to say, wow, okay, cool. Or how do you cope? How do you, when there's no, there's no definite answer. There's, there's none, you know, and that's why I feel like the way how we are going to approach this topic is very important because then you will ask me questions from the perspective of a mother that has to be dealing with, because I'm not going to say that have have dealt with you're dealing with right it's ongoing so, it doesn't, never stop. Goes by. doesn't stop um 
so before even before i even jump into the questions that i have for you and to hear the ones that you have for me i want you to tell me who and i will say is i'm not going to say was who is kaden wow Kaden is my lifeline, my constant, my reason for dot, dot, dot. Um, I'm a very private person when it comes to certain things. It took me some time to reveal that I was pregnant when I was pregnant. Yeah. Um, when I did open that chapter up, since then, you know, he was born, I shared those pictures and from then he's been always on my Instagram. Everybody, oh cute baby, cute baby. You know, so when when that happened, it opened up an avenue or a village of people that I didn't even know existed. Hey. So because of him, that's why I say he's my constant. Because of him, he's the reason why I'm now the person that I am. In a sense, like I'm a little bit more open, not as reserved, not I don't take hold back anymore. So he, to me, is was my angel on earth. He is my angel on earth. Like I tell people when they ask, I gave birth to an angel because there's no way a two-year-old would attract that many people from near, far, different countries, people I've never met in life. There's yeah. no way. Yeah. There's no yeah. way. So yeah. I get that. he is my angel that. on earth for sure. I get that. I get that. I get that. I get that. And I'm I'm happy that that's how you're you're seeing it, you know. Um and as I say, we 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 both had this conversation. We plan to be open and raw, and I'm telling you like my my body is filled with emotions right now. Like mm -hmm. yeah, um cuz I'm feeling you. You know, I'm an empath. I can't help it. I'm feeling you. Um no, I would say I remember when Basilia a mutual friend of ours, Basila Barnaby, we love you, just so you know. Um, Shout out to I remember, <laughs> I remember when Basila reached out to me and she said, Reinhard, you, you heard what happened? I said, mm, no. She said, Katie, son. Because I, I, I never know um, nothing. You know, leading up to nothing. I've I've seen pictures. I've seen pictures, but I did not know anything. So when she said, I was admiring Caden from afar, mm -hmm. admiring. Just know that know that yeah, yeah. Are we, are we high school friends? We are high school people. Know we're out here in the world having kids. You know, like yeah. <laughs> so I was admiring um Caden from afar, admiring you being a mother. You know, you were always that female in high school that I had high respects for. Very, very high. Katie yeah. used to give all up at trouble, Katie. With that yes. troublemaker. <laughs> With that troublemaker. Right, true. Remember my friend them. I was the leader of the pack, you know. Right? But life life changed and we never disrespect each other. We never had any run-ins, you know. Mm -hmm. So seeing that you're a mother and I was just appreciating that, look, this boy is just glowing. And he had his own page and everything. I was just like, yo, this 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 boy is a beautiful soul. You know? So when Basilia called me, and Basilia told me, I shed a tear. And I did not meet your son. Why? Because I'm a father. And I said, Basilia, I'm going to reach out to Katie. And she said, she might need some time. I said, but I'm going to reach out to Katie. I couldn't help it. That's when I typed to you. I said, Katie, I don't know how you do it. But just so you know, you're one of the strongest females I know. Because I, and I said to you, I don't know what I would do if something like that should happen to me. Katie, two years after, I lost my girl two years after. But we get into it. Um, yeah. I had a similar experience. Um, I discussed this mutual friend. He had lost his daughter 
a couple months before I lost Caden, I want to say. It could have been the same year. Maybe it was the year before. I don't remember. But I remember when um, another mutual friend of ours, she called me while I was driving home from work. And I parked my car, just a random spot in the garage. And I sat there, and I was bawling. I had Caden in the back seat. I pulled him in the front seat, and I was just looking at him, and I was like, I... Mm -hmm. Like you said, I don't know how. Like, in my mind, I'm like, I don't know how I would handle life if you're not here. And I just hugged him and I cried before I reached out to the guy who lost his daughter. And um, now that you mentioned it, I remember having that moment. And I'm like, there is no way I could survive something like that. And I want to say shortly after, you know, it happened That's to so me. Nice. And took a process you know it might be the same for you you we just had to figure it out we just had to figure it out um it 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 i think these questions will re reveal a lot of what's inside you know and as, as i said katie i'm very happy that you chose me you chose this you chose us to share this energy you know, I'm, I'm very protective. I'm very protective of the whole experience. There are certain words I don't use, Katie. I don't use funeral when it comes on to my daughter. I don't use death when it comes on to my child. I, there are certain words I just don't use because I'm very protective of her presence regardless, you know. Um, I have a lot of healing to do, that much I can tell you. I do have a lot of healing to do. Um, Ray Marie, my daughter for me was everything, is everything. Katie, when I say everything, I mean everything, everything. You know how me did bother high school and everything, and my daughter changed my whole life. So yeah, um, yeah, Ray Marie, Ray Marie. So, backstory, Katie. I'm not sure if you, you you know. Ray Marie's name is a combination of my name and my mother's name. Mm. It's Raynard plus Marie. My mother's name is Rosemary Young. Mm. No, my mother and my daughter are like twins. I spent my whole childhood phase of begging for one day to experience my mother. I never had to experience, I never got the opportunity to experience my mother, Katie. Like my mother, that's my mother when I was two years old. And my upbringing was not, just not smooth. It was not smooth. I had a lot of mother figures, you would call them, but a lot of abuse came with it. A lot of abuse. No, you know, um, as, I, as I, I made mention on my previous podcast about suicide, things that I, I went through as a child made me contemplate suicide at a very young age. You know, I overcame that feeling. Um, was just out here looking for love, you know. Um, hence why I was just that troublesome person in high school. But yes, I was so loved by so many. You know, everybody did just know me. Some not like, but most majority of women would just love the boy, would just love the trouble. But that was just me searching, you know. Then I found love in my child. I found a whole reason to live. A whole reason to live. I did everything for my baby girl. So she was a daughter, a mother, a sister, a best friend that I never had. So she's more to me than just my child. And that's why that experience for me, Katie, threw me away far. I was numb for two years. Numb. Nothing made sense. Nothing. But we're going to get into it. Because, you know, we have questions to ask each other. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now, I have my first question for you, Katie. Um... So the reason why I trust you to ask me any question is because I know that it won't come from a very insensitive place. It will come from nothing but just purified, heartfelt connection, right? Um, and I trust that you will know that these questions are from that place, from me as well. Of course. Right. Mm -hmm. So my first question for you is on September 1st, 2017, Upon recognizing that your first and only child at that time 
was no longer with you, can you describe the mental state you were in at that time? Why is my first question similar to that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but hey, I guess you have answers and then, you know, it's, 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 it's on me. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, September 1st, 2017, it was a Friday morning. Okay, so how my house is set up, you have the master bedroom, which is where me and his dad used to sleep, and then he had his, his own room. Mm -hmm. Backtracking to the night before, um, he, he was in our room watching TV, me and him. I was tired. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Just let him fall asleep. Because we were not in the habit of let him, letting him sleep in the same bed with us. Okay. His dad was like, no, he, we could just put him in his room or whatever. Because I don't want to... We got into that whole, I don't want me to fall asleep too hard or whatever. Right. Around him. He was two years right. old. He wasn't like it was three months. But still, we were right. happy of that. Right. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to argue. Just put him in his room. I'm fine. That, that's fine. That night, I had two dreams and it's not like i knew it was going to happen but i knew something was you know spiritual i had mm -hmm. two dreams the first dream at the time my mother was in Can uh cayman and the first dream i had was that she was sitting in my then apartment living room on the couch and she was sitting down with her eyes rolling back i know that she wasn't having the best time in cayman at the time so i was like when i woke up to the dream i was like you know what first thing tomorrow morning i'm just gonna call make sure she's okay and then I went back to sleep. The second dream I have after that, and it might sound crazy to people, which is why I only share it with some people that I know can relate. Right, right. But hey, here we are. Yeah. The second dream I had, um, that Friday, before that Friday, like a week before, I was in Miami and I got his birthday tattooed right here. The second dream I had was somebody gave me a tattoo like, down here at the lower part of my stomach it was a bunch of flowers and within the flowers it was the word mother but it felt like something was over me and there i was like laying that in my dream i was like cursing somebody i'm like yo this is like a backwards tramp stamp why would anybody put a whole bunch of flowers below their belly here like i was upset right. whatever so then normal friday morning i woke up went to his room before I turned the light on. I normally like pick out his clothes so I don't like wake him up, get him grumpy before I put his clothes on. So went on the side of the bed, grabbed his clothes for the day, went back around the other side of the bed. But before I even turned the light on and I looked down on him on the bed, something clicked because he was laying face down. So when I flashed the light on, I saw him laying face down. I flipped him over. He just flopped. And his face was blue and like, ever since that happened, I picked him up. I ran him into the living room. He was, he was heavy as lead. I knew something was wrong. He's not breathing. I was yelling for his dad to get out of the bathroom to come. I was trying to prop his mouth open. I was trying CPR. I was on the phone with Nano. I don't know what the hell I was doing, but I was doing all these things at the same time. And to this day, Katie is not Katie. Katie is left in that room trying to figure out what the what the hell just happened. No, say it. If that's if you want to say, be raw. Katie was Let still in that room, standing over his bed, trying to figure out what happened. Because I I literally left my own body from that day. And numb, you said numb earlier. That's exactly how I would describe myself since September first, twenty seventeen. No. Thank you. It took me a couple different experiences to start feeling again. To start getting emotional. I, I haven't been emotional. Nothing triggers me anymore. I'm the kind of person, if I see somebody crying, I start crying and ask what happened after. I'll watch a movie. Halfway through the movie, I'm like sobbing. That's how I was. People yeah. come to me and start telling me their sentiments and normally I'm the person to hug and cry with them. That doesn't happen anymore. I've been numb since September 1st, 2017. But 
certain experiences like my twins now, that kind of started to breathe life into me again. And even within their first year, to be very honest, I felt like I was not a good enough mother because I wasn't giving them my all. Because I was too scared to get like right. this with them. Right. Right. I was too scared. Right. So even now they have a better relationship with their dad because he's always picked up the pieces. He's always been there for them. And then a part of me wants to do that, but then a part of me is like, I just don't want to get too close because it's scared. But that helps with the numbness, so. Right. Not as numb, right. I guess. Right. But yeah. I love you. <laughs> thank you. Let me say that, right? Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. You. Yeah. And then, wait, do I ask my question now or do we you do you ask me all of yours? Okay. No. So, my okay. first Not question today. was I wasn't sure of the exact, like, I think you were here when it happened in Jamaica. Yep. So, okay, then my question does make sense. How, how are you able to describe the way you felt when you got the news? Um, so, my daughter transitioned on December 5th, 2019. Now, on the night of the 3rd, December 3rd, 2019, I was at work and I felt so sick, Katie. Sick to my stomach. Now, I'm, I'm vegan, right? I mean, I eat certain things. So I was like, why is my stomach affecting me so much? I did not want to use the bathroom or anything, but there was just this upset feeling in my lower stomach. Hence why when you said flowers around your lower stomach, I, just, I was just shaking my head. I felt that feeling within my stomach. My spirit was off. I had a headache. I just I just couldn't tell what the fuck was happening to me, Katie. Like I couldn't tell what happened to me and... You know, I'm very spiritual, so I was just wondering, what is it that is so out of sync? I couldn't put my fingers on it. No, I know my daughter wasn't well, you know, but I felt like it was just another flu um, Passover, you know? So me and her mom was on the phone, and her mom was like, hey, you know, she's 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 getting better, you know, such and such, and then tomorrow she will wake up, and she's, she's not feeling as well. I mean, like, yo. But the one thing about my daughter is whenever she's not well, she wants me. She wants her daddy. You know, she will tell her mom, Mo, I'm a daddy. That's how she is. And she's very outspoken. So, um, that was the night of the third. And I took a photo that night. I dropped home a friend of mine from work, from the airport. And I took a photo that night. And I uploaded that photo. But when I look at that photo, Katie, I saw so much about myself. And I was like, what is it about this photo that's so different? The, what is it about this, this photo is so different I me mean, take pictures what is it about that one and somebody look at me and said that's your mother standing there you know that's not you mm. I was like why would you say that I said why would you say that somebody said that's your own mother there's a whole difference over you I'm gonna send you the picture when we finish right I was standing like outside in a snow like snow that fall and me have a little jacket and tie and everything and the snow that fall on my face and you know, so I'm going to go home and I couldn't tell what was wrong. Even the person that I was dropping home, I was complaining. I said, I don't know why I'm feeling so off. I feel sick. Like, I feel, I felt lifeless. But I couldn't tell what it was. So, the fourth, which was a Wednesday, um, that I kept on calling and I keep on answering. I said, baby, what's wrong? You know, she said, daddy. I want you, I want you. Daddy, I want you. And Katie, I'm going to work. I went to work and I was like, what is so off? Now my daughter called me 12, 21. That, the fourth, 12, 21 midday. And 
she 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 she, she FaceTime me, video call me, and my audio, call her back audio. She said, Daddy, no, call me video. And I was like, okay, baby, call her video. She was in the bathtub because she had very high fever. That's what, you know, um, she was in the bathtub and she was saying to me, she said, Daddy, I want you. Daddy, I'm tired of them people. I'm tired of you. So I'm tired. I want to live with you. I want to with you there. Katie, this is not the first time my daughter tell me that. It's when she said that to me, I burst in tears. And I was like, look, I'm something wrong with my daughter. Like her eyes was telling me, like her spirit is telling me I'm coming to you. No, you know, our, our, our people in the room are trying to help her. Cause you know, Jamaican think you have a high fever, mm-hmm. cold water. They were trying and they were medicine. They were, they were trying to give her, but my daughter didn't really believe in the whole medicine thing. You know, she was like, this splitting image of me personality personality wise so then one of her aunts said to her take the medicine if you don't take the medicine you might dead you might die i got so fucking upset on my daughter tell me that and up to this day i cannot look on that aunt of hers i cannot because yeah, we're more light as Jamaicans. We know. We might she might she might have not meant anything. But in a case where she she wasn't feeling herself, you don't want to mention certain things to her. So she said it, and when she said it, she said, Daddy, I'm tired of everything. I want to live with you. I want you. Katie, I started crying. But my dad work on me. I said, baby, I promise you, I'm coming for you. My only reason for coming to America is to get my daughter that luxury of going back and forth i didn't give a damn about me my life centered around my child no come home our mother tell me say she tell me for care i got hospital and me say me i come down me i come down that was the the wednesday me i come down so them care i got hospital and Big my father for go look upon her and me I say, hey, how she look, you know, how she stay. He was telling me that um, you know, yeah, she alright, man. She she not look her strongest, but she got her right. And me I say, yo, family, don't tell me no lie. Like, don't tell me no lie. You know, and her mother, they there with her, me I hear another background and the whole thing. So now here comes Friday. No, here comes Thursday. Here comes Thursday, which is the fifth. Got up. I mean, I say, I couldn't sleep. You know, I get a little nap and I get up and I say, hey, how is she? You know, her mother, they there with her mother, I tell me, I say, boy, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I say, carry your phone, go give her. I mean, I say, turn around the phone, my daughter see me. I'm looking at my daughter's eyes, Katie. I'm say, baby, I love you. I'm looking at my daughter's eyes. I'm say, baby, I love you. And she look up and she say, mmm. Daughter never have a strength to respond to me. That was the last time I said to my child. That was the last thing I said. And then I end up going to work because I never know what to do. I just never want to stay home. You know? I never want to stay home. I go work and upon arriving at the airport, automatic door. I always work. Once you go there, the sense I tell you, you move. Me on the phone with her grandmother. I mean, I say, Oh, my daughter. The phone cut off and I call her back. When I call her back, her mother I cry. And I say, I say, Mom, because that's what I call um, her grandmother. I say, Whoa, what happened? And she said, Poor oh, Kenny. Kenny. When I walked up to the door, the door would not open. 
That door would not open for nothing. Go into the office and as I go in like you know my break down. Break down right there, break right down and you know, people come around and people try to hug me up and everything and the whole thing but get a flight and reach a Jamaica. But the 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 the, the the, the, the flight to Jamaica was what really destroyed me. I could not cope. Every, I cried the entire journey to Jamaica, the entire journey. The whole flight attendant and crew and everybody had to come around me. I, I cried the whole journey because I kept on looking through photos. Let me say, yo, oh, oh, why? And then I blame myself. Like, Blame myself. That me feel like you may never leave me, baby. I might not be right, you know. This is by it's by no means me saying who had the opportunity to take care of her didn't take care of her. I'm just saying as a as her father, I felt like I would have done more. And you know? I, I I had the same sentiments because he passed away from bronchitis. Mm. Apparently, when it took them like two months to get the autopsy back to us, because for two months I didn't know what happened. I didn't know what was the cause. I didn't know why. I didn't know myself. Two months, and when they brought back the autopsy, or when they they gave it back to us via email, and I read it, couldn't understand it. Called the doctor. They said basically it's bronchitis. The night before. He, he, me, him, and his dad, we went to Popeye's. It was We were in Atlanta. So between August, September, the temperature started to change slightly. Mm -hmm. So he did have a, a little cold. Nothing enough to give him a fever. Nothing enough for us to take him to the hospital. A cold. Running yeah. nose. That's it. Not even congestion on his chest. We went. We got Popeye's. We came home. I happened to call... Um, my cousin via FaceTime. And when I called her, cause I was like, you know, I haven't spoken to my cousin in so long. So when I called her, my sister was there. My stepmom was there. My cousin was there with her kid. No, she didn't have a kid yet. She was there with her boyfriend or whatever. And um, her boyfriend was like, oh, I haven't seen Kaden in so long. Let me see him. So I turned the camera around. He was there talking to them. Everybody was there. And um, the only person missing was my dad. I was the only person who wasn't there physically. So we had a chat on video call. Then I was like, you know what? I'm going to give him a shower. We stand for bed, whatever. He has school in the morning. So he, we went, had his bath time. A normal, normal night. Um, the only, like you said, you kind of blamed yourself. My only, and it took some time for me to listen to other people to say you know don't try to blame yourself don't try to blame his dad don't don't put the blame anywhere but just leave that just part allow. out of it right right it was me being so because i'm always consumed with work even till today work is like a drug for me yeah. yeah i'm always consumed with work and when i thought about it i was like i was just too tired to push back and say let him sleep with me if I had just given it a little bit of ounce of you go sleep somewhere on, on the couch or whatever, I'll sleep with him. Sleep with if him. if right. I had just given it just one more push and say, you know what, he's good with me. I could have heard him struggling to breathe or something. I could have done something. And you know what was funny? His dad didn't even sleep in the bed that night. He was working on the computer and he didn't want to wake me up. So he went and laid on the couch. He did not even sleep in the room that night. And sometimes he blames himself too because he was like, I was right there in the living room and I didn't even hear you cry. I didn't hear you struggle, nothing. Yeah. He writes songs and stuff about it. Yeah. But he dealt with his situation differently from me, which is a part of the reason why we even split up, but that's a different story. Yeah. But that blame game, thankfully yeah. I was able to overcome that because it took me some places. It yeah. took me some places. That blame game took me the, those two dreams I had. You know, at one point I was like, if I had just gotten up, 
Just go yeah. check and make sure everybody in the house is okay. If I had just gotten up, I could have seen something. Because when we brought the ambulance came, we brought him to the emergency room. They couldn't put a time on when he actually passed. They called it at 7.01 in the morning, but yeah. they couldn't put a time on exactly when he passed because she was like, if when I had flipped him over, picked him up, if he was already blue in the face, he had already passed right. away. Right. So they couldn't put a time on it. But I was like, you know, if the first dream I had with my mom, I should have went and checked on my child. But I was just too tired to even get up. Those are, those are the questions. Very serious. So, um, so during the time when I went home, okay, did see what, leading back to the blame game, um, a doctor called me and said, hey, I think you should question this more, you know. I think it was just negligence on the medical team and yada yada yada. I said, doctor, let me tell you something. It's best you don't tell me to do that. Because you see, if I should follow my heart, the law doesn't have nothing to do with what I want to do. You hear me? But because I raised my child with so much love, but I chose to. Of you.